Hi, Total Recapped here. Today we will be going through the events of the 2021 sci-fi action movie Outside the Wire, directed by Mikhail Hafstrom. Warning, this video contains spoilers, so watch at your own risk. Now let's get right into the movie. In 2036, a civil war in Ukraine led the US to deploy peacekeeping forces containing the US Marines and US Gumps, the robotic soldiers there. During an operation, a team of United States Marines led by Sergeant Miller and robotic soldiers, the Gumps, are ambushed. Two of the US Marines get shot during the battle with the terrorists. Miller tries his best to save the lives of the soldiers, but cannot due to intensive firings going around. Meanwhile, we can see a drone keeping an eye on the entire battle, which is run by drone pilot First Lieutenant Harp. Harp notices something unusual in the truck besides which the two soldiers are lying injured. He suspects that the truck is carrying a missile launcher and is about to shoot missiles at US Marines. He asks his seniors if he can destroy the truck, but everyone at his base denies him from doing so. Disobeying a direct order, drone pilot First Lieutenant Harp deploys a Hellfire missile in a drone strike against a suspected enemy launcher, killing two of the Marines, but saving the remaining 38. Sergeant Miller gets very angry at Harp and cusses him for his act. As punishment, Harp, who has never personally served in a war zone before, is sent to Camp Nathaniel, the US base of operations in Ukraine. Here, Harp is assigned to Captain Leo, who reveals that he is secretly a highly advanced and experimental android super soldier masquerading as an eccentric human military officer. Only a few of the people know that Leo is actually a robot. He discusses the plan of Warlord Koval and his previous attacks. Later, Harp and Leo set out on a mission to prevent pro-Russian terrorist Viktor Koval from gaining control of a network of Cold War-era nuclear missile silos, under the cover of delivering vaccines to a refugee camp. On the way, their convoy responds to a reported attack on the friendly aid truck, which results in a standoff between the US Marines and armed locals. After a gump shoots a local who threw a rock at the gump, the locals get enraged and are ready to attack at US Marines. Captain Leo manages to negotiate a peaceful solution to the confrontation by giving the locals the contents of the aid truck. However, pro-Russian insurgents ambush the gathered locals and US Marines, which leads to a fight. An intense firefight takes place where missiles are launched from both sides. With a duty to deliver the vaccines to the camp, Leo and a nervous harp face a narrow escape from the fight. Now they travel to the refugee camp on foot, while the US Marines remain behind to engage the insurgents. After arriving at the refugee compound, Leo and Harp follow a man who takes them to the medical facility. While handling the vaccines they brought, they are shot at by an insurgent using a sniper rifle, killing a few civilians but missing them. Leo immediately locates the insurgent and shoots him right in the neck. Harp watches as Leo tortures the insurgent for information. The insurgent refuses to provide any information, so he leaves him to be killed by the gathered Ukrainians. This brutality of Leo disturbs Harp. Harp then inquires Leo about the matter he is trying to hide from him. Leo refuses to answer and asks him to get into the truck. With no other options left for him, Harp gets into the truck alongside Leo. Throughout the drive, Harp seems to be disturbed when Leo praises him for his work of destroying the launcher as a drone pilot, saving the life of 38 innocent US Marines. During their conversation inside the truck, they talk about each of their possible mistakes and the reason they ended up there. Later, Leo and Harp meet their contact Sophia, a resistance leader at an orphanage. Leo suggests Harp to stay close, keep his mouth shut, and pay attention. There, they see the children playing happily with each other in robots. Sophia is the one who takes care of all the children orphaned due to the war. After Leo asks her to tell whatever she knows, Sophia hesitates to tell it in front of Harp. When Harp confirms that she can trust him, she tells Harp that US drone strikes are responsible for the deaths of many of the orphan's parents further unsettling him. Sophia mentions to them that the nuclear missiles are controlled by the codes which are kept secret. She further adds that Koval might be near the missiles and the codes. Because of the continuous questioning by Leo, Sophia leads them to an arms dealer, Oshlak, who knows the location of a bank vault containing nuclear launch codes that Koval is looking for. In order to get to Oshlak, Sophia sells Leo the illegal weapons. Harp is surprised to see that and later is comforted by Sophia personally telling him that is how she collects the money to run the orphanage. After telling them about Oshlak, Sophia also joins them to the place where Oshlak can be found. She identifies Oshlak's car and leads them to a market. Leo enters the chamber where Oshlak is present and attacks him. Leo defeats all of Oshlak's men and also catches him when he tries to escape. He inquires about his recent delivery to Viktor Koval's men that day. 
Oshlik replies that he delivered Russian gumps just an hour ago to them. On being asked about the nuclear codes, Oshlik replies that they are present at a bank, Dinapro Investment. Before leaving the place, Sophia kills Oshlak while telling that he is a traitor. Later, Harp and Leo travel to the bank in Oshlak's car. Harp suggests Leo to call for the backup forces as Koval is with a lot of weapons and men. He is afraid that the two of them will not be able to fight with Koval and his army. On the way, Harp asks Leo at what point he can violate the orders and get punished. Leo replies that since Harp is with him, all the blame will be upon him. As soon as they enter the bank, they are met by Koval's forces, which include several Russian-made gumps. All the employees of the bank are taken hostage by Koval. Leo orders Harp to escort the employees while he gets into a fight with Koval's men. Later, Leo asks Harp to call for military backup. Harp calls the military base and informs them that they are in a bank along with Victor Koval. While Harp gains the courage to help rescue civilians, the military backup with the Gumps arrives at the place. But Koval's men bring out the remaining employees and threaten to kill them. As Harp is trying to control the situation, one of the military Gump fires at the terrorists. Then the crossfire starts between Koval's men, Russian Gumps, and U.S. Gumps. Many innocent civilians are killed in crossfire between the Russian Gumps and a squad of U.S. Gumps. On the other hand, Leo retrieves the codes, but Koval is nowhere to be found. Back at the military base, the generals are planning for a drone missile attack at the bank, and they inform Harp to get out of the destruction-prone area. A drone strike called in by Harp destroys the bank and several surrounding buildings, leading the military command to believe both Koval and Leo are dead. After the attack, Harp gets out and witnesses that many innocent civilians are also killed. He is devastated to see this. In the next scene, Harp reunites with an alive Leo who tells him that he has his own plans for the codes, and what he has been manipulating Harp into helping him escape the eye of the military command. He also mentions that the hardware Harp took out of his body earlier was the chip by which the US military used to control him. When Harp tries to shoot Leo, he knocks out Harp and leaves him on the side of the road. Later, Harp finds himself on the roadside where the Resistance men arrive. He tries to run away from them, but they eventually catch him and bring him into the front of their leader, Sophia. Harp asks Sophia to untie his arms and also tells her that Leo is a threat to them as he is going towards the perimeter of the nuclear missile. Sophia then tells him that Leo is working for them to get control of the missiles and codes to operate them. She adds that Leo is not going towards the perimeter, but is rather heading towards Victor Koval. After hearing this, Harp tells her that Koval is dead in the drone attack at the bank. Sophia tells him that Victor was not at the bank and Leo is after him. However, we see Leo meeting with Koval to give him the codes and ask for the location of the perimeter in return. Here, Sophia mentions to Harp that Leo is right as the US are the ones who are tempting the war. They advertise for peace but are the main agents for creating the war. Harp then tries to make Sophia understand that if Leo launches the nuclear missile on US, then millions of innocent people will lose their lives. Sophia ends up answering him that it is necessary for people to lose their lives to retain peace. Harp realizes that Leo is planning to launch the nuclear missiles at the United States himself in order to prevent the country from fighting more destructive wars in the future. On the other hand, we see Leo attacking Koval and his men. He kills Koval's men one by one despite Koval trying his best to stop him. Leo ends up killing Koval too after he refuses to give Leo access to a nuclear missile silo under his control. He then checks into Koval's computer system and gets the information about the perimeter of the nuclear missiles. After Sophia leaves Harp, he goes straight to Colonel Eckhart and informs him about Leo's situation. At first, Eckhart does not believe him as he thought Leo is dead, but later after Harp explains all the story in detail, they agree to assist him. Harp volunteers himself to find the location of Leo and stop him. He calls his co-worker Bale and asks her to track Leo's car. After some time, Bale is able to track the car and sends the last location to him. Harp hops onto a car and sets onto his mission to stop Leo. With the help of the last location coordinates, Harp reaches a research center where he believes Leo is present. We see Leo making the missile launching device ready for the attack. Harp volunteers to infiltrate the silo and finds Leo has taken over. Leo then senses the presence of someone in the research center. He tracks Harp and attacks him, explaining to him that it is necessary to do the task for the betterment of the future world. Harp continuously shoots at Leo, but not before Leo makes him unconscious. Leo sets the code into the machine and sets its timer for the launch. Meanwhile, Bale inspects the research center with the help of a drone and finds that the missile is set to launch. She then informs Eckhart, who stops her from firing at the missile at the research center. Eckhart tries to contact Harp and asks him if he should initiate the attack. Harp gains his consciousness and walks towards Leo, shooting him with the deadly bullets made to damage military vehicles. He disables Leo, but not before Leo initiates the launch of a missile and explains that his true goal was for the android super soldier program to end in failure. 
Harp asks Leo about the ways to stop the missile, but Leo refuses to answer. Harp then notices that he is running out of time and informs Bale to initiate the drone missile attack at the location. In the last scene, we see that Harp escapes, just as the silo is destroyed by a drone strike before the missile can launch. The resulting explosion kills Leo in the process. In the aftermath, Harp returns to Camp Nathaniel and receives praise from his commander, who then informs Harp that he is going home. At last, Harp leaves the base and returns to his home back to his lover. And that was my recap of the movie. Hope you enjoyed it. Now comment on what your favorite part was and make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, take care and goodbye.